Uh, thank, thanks for coming out. Um, I have a story. When I, uh, I came out here to Southern California for the first time for school, just like a college student like you guys did, and I remember the first time it rained, and I went to class, and I was the only person in the classroom because no one else went. So thank you for coming tonight. So, okay. Well, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm speaking again. Every year I've done this, just talking about what's going on, uh, what, what went on during the year, and what's going to happen next year, maybe. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to be back. And uh, someone asked me earlier, why, why are we doing this in December rather than January? And uh, the, the reason why is because most funding actually happens before December. Um, if uh, you talk to any investors, venture capitalists, you know, by the time you hit the December, most people are kind of, you know, holidays and that kind of thing. So that's why we're doing it in December. Uh, there might be one or two things that are announced between now and the end of the year, but uh, should be a pretty good uh, idea of what happened. So uh, I'm, I'm Ben Quo. Uh, I uh, founded SoCalTech.com. And how many people have, have been to the website? Just so I make sure. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, let me talk a little bit about it. So it looks like especially a lot of students have not heard of it. So what's SoCalTech? Um, we are a website which basically lets you figure out what is going on here in Southern California's technology industry. And we cover everywhere from Santa Barbara to San Diego. And news stories all the time, uh, updated in real time. Uh, we have interviews with entrepreneurs. Uh, we do, uh, uh, we have a big database of companies if you're looking for, for companies to work for or, or who's getting funding or who maybe wants, want to buy a product of yours. Uh, we have a calendar of all the events. Um, and a lot of other resources. So go to the website um, and uh, sign in. There's a lot of there's a lot of resources there, and uh, hopefully it'll be helpful to you. It's all designed for entrepreneurs and people in the uh, in the industry. So uh, the, I, I found this uh, comic the other day. And how many people have heard of the echo chamber? Echo chamber. So if you're in technology, there's something called the echo chamber, and it's really important, I think, especially for the students and, and even for anyone who's starting a company, to understand what the echo chamber is. So the echo chamber in Silicon Valley, anyone, anyone here worked in Silicon Valley? No one did? Oh, wow. Okay. So if you've ever worked in Silicon Valley, it is a very, very insular place. Um, you know, everybody's talking about companies next to them. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of what I call groupthink. And what happens is you end up, uh, say you're, you're doing a robotic startup and you're going to be doing manufacturing. Well, all of a sudden, instead of you being the one company doing uh, manufacturing robotics, there's 10 of them. And that's the echo chamber. Because somebody hears that, and, and you know, because of the density, and all of a sudden, everybody is trying to do the same thing, even if they haven't even talked to a customer. So I don't know how many people have heard about market, uh, market validation for a startup. Uh, if you go into an environment which is an echo chamber, the problem is you just hear yourself. And everyone goes, that's a great idea. And no one's actually talked to a customer who wants to actually purchase a product. So um, you need to escape the echo chamber. And anyone who's thinking about entrepreneurship, anyone who is an entrepreneur, make sure you're not in the echo chamber. Uh, we don't have that big of an issue here in Southern California. Uh, the, you know, we're fortunate that not everybody here is at Facebook or Google or whatever it is. Um, it's good to have those companies around, but the problem is you're talking to early adopters, and everyone says, oh yeah, of course I need this gadget for my self-driving um, self electric car. Um, and everyone in the world will buy that, but no one has a self-driving you know, uh, electric car, or very few people do, outside of that, that environment. So that's an important thing about the echo chamber, um, and I just thought this was funny. So, uh, so on the echo chamber thing, what people think technology is about and only about in Southern California. So uh, I talk to a lot of uh, venture capitalists and a lot of entrepreneurs, and I, I even talk to a lot of people who aren't in the technology industry. Uh, and, and when you say, oh, Southern California, they still think, oh, there's, there's a few tech companies down there, but it's mostly Elon Musk, isn't it? Isn't there that space company he does? Um, oh, and there's all this internet, you know, internet uh, content stuff, but not much other than that, right? All Tinder and... And then, oh, uh, Ashton Kutcher right here is an investor. So this is, this is the picture when you talk to most lay people of what Southern California is. And, and uh, you, you, need to, you need to broaden your horizons. Well, this is Nest. How many people have a Nest, by the way? Anyone know what a Nest door cam is? So Nest is an is a intelligent device that replaces your doorbell. So rather than the little thing with the light and makes noises, uh, you press the button, and it goes, and it, it actually hits your phone, and it says, and you get a little ring, and it says, oh, someone's at the door. And you can answer it and go, hello, and what do you got there? And so they think you're home. You can record things in the middle of the night. It's, anyway, so 
is a Southern California company, so uh, a lot of some people don't know that. But uh, there's only a few, and Snapchat, of course. How many how many uh, students here only use Snapchat? Right, right. None of this none of this old-fashioned Facebook stuff. Anyway, so. Um, uh, this, this is what people think Southern California is. But if you look at it, this is really what technology is about in Southern California. It's a huge world out there. This isn't even all the companies. This is just a few that I've picked out of the world. Um, you have to understand that this is a great dynamic environment for startups, for companies. And the reason why is because it's diverse. There is a huge you know, A to Z of kinds of companies. It is not just Hollywood. In fact. Uh, it's funny enough, the, the investors I talk to from out of the era always go, oh, you guys have a lot of content startups, right? And I go, well, we have a few, but there's not a lot. Um, it's, it's, a, it, it's a part of the f formula, but it's not everything. So, you know, there's, there's hardware companies, and I'm sure a lot of people know that this corridor in particular has a lot of hardware companies. How many people have uh, heard of Semtech and their low power wireless technology? Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool technology that you can, it's low power, so the batteries last for a very long time. I think someone said 10 years or whatever it is. And it sends data, and they're using it. To, uh, I think they just did a deal in Australia to track cows. Little sensor in the ear, and they say, oh, the cow is you know, 90. I don't even know what cows are, but whatever temperature it is, and they're moving, and then when the, what, what's going on. Uh, there, there's uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of companies in robotics. I mentioned that earlier. There's, there's actually a bunch of companies doing um, drones and unmanned area vehicles. There's a ton of consumer companies, and I mentioned Ring, but how many people have ha bought something from Belkin? They make like a billion accessories. Um, they, make, uh, they make so many things that you wouldn't even know what they do. Linksys routers, everyone have a Linksys router? That's actually Belkin, so. Um, uh, DTS does sound stuff. So there's, there's this whole world, and just you know, broadly there's, there's there's, uh, there's gaming. Gaming is a huge thing. Uh, esports. How many people here watch esports tournaments? None of the students watch esports tournaments? They want to admit it? OK. Um, uh, there's, of course, the internet, internet folks, the, the internet content folks. You know, Amazon Studios is down here. Even though it's Amazon, all the, all the uh, headquarters are down here. Netflix has most of their, their, their uh, content folks down here. Um, then there's this whole area of, I call it infrastructure, internet, um, advanced technology. That's the Hyperloop of the world. How many people have actually heard of Hyperloop? Just curious. Okay, so most people have heard of it. Um, and there's, there's a huge cluster of companies in the Mojave and actually in Long Beach doing kind of the, 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 the everything from rockets to, space, uh, to, to, to related aerospace technology. And it turns out, a lot of people used to poo-poo the fact that Southern California had a lot of aerospace companies, but all these you know, cutting edge uh, s companies doing this kind of stuff have come here because of the experience base. And it, it's funny because it's not even people, oh, are these the people who are working on the moon rockets in the 50s? No, 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 this is a whole new generation of folks. If you look at, uh, anyone ever been to SpaceX and taken a tour? Yeah, so if you go to SpaceX, it is a, it's an internet company, right? It's not a defense company, it's an internet company. How it's structured, uh, the work environment, and it is, it is uh, you know, cutting edge. So it's uh, very interesting what's going on there. Uh, in the middle, there's a ton of software companies. And it's funny because most people don't know that Southern California has software companies. Um, enterprise software is big here. Um, there are a ton of companies that are doing very well. And I'll talk a little bit more about those. Um, a lot of folks who have gone IPO from the enterprise software space. So when people say, hey, you can't build a software company in Southern California, uh, they haven't been here very long. They go, don't you guys just do content and internet? No, 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 no. We've got a lot of engineers and software computer scientists uh, working on stuff. Um, uh, of course, there's social folks, you know, Snapchat, Tinder. There's a lot of, lot of those mar marketplaces, a ton of them. And uh, there's a lot of activity in that area. Uh, I, biotech, obviously, is a big, huge thing. Um, anyway, so, so this is just some of it. Internet advertising, there's publishing. Basically, almost any industry that you could think of, and especially for students, you're going, oh, where, where do I want to go? Uh, what kind of company do I want to work for after I graduate in the technology space? There's a whole world here, and uh, so it's worth looking around. Uh, don't think it's just one or two companies. There's a ton. This is, this is a fraction of the companies that are here. These are just some of the bigger names. So, so. Recent funding, uh, this is sorted kind of by amount of money, and, and so 
the reason for this list is for you to get an idea of where's the activity, right? Year in review, where's the activity been? Um, and at the very top, how many people have heard of Task Us? Wow, one person. So Task Us is, I think there are 2,500, 3,000 employees, but most of them are overseas. Uh, they were started by two guys literally out of their apartment uh, in Santa Monica. And they, what they do is when you go and use your favorite internet uh, service, so when you guys are out posting for hot dates on Tinder, um, hopefully not some of you guys, but anyway, uh, they, they do the screening, right? They'll have, they'll have a group of people who says, hey, are these okay to post? And they do all the back end. They do all that stuff. They do customer service, and they've grown huge. It's, been a, it's a huge, uh, huge company, $250 million. That's a lot of money to put in a company. Um, ZipRecruiter, how many people looking for a job? ZipRecruiter uh, is a great place to go uh, look for a job. They actually, they more uh, are looking for, uh, for employers to, to, I think that's where their, their business stream is, but they've done very well. I'll talk about them. They're one of the unicorns in the area. Um, job listings, and you think, you know, didn't people do that back in the 90s? No, 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 this is, this is all stuff now where they're using a lot of software, AI tools, better matching, a lot of stuff, uh, so they're doing very well. Uh, patient Pop is managing, helping uh, medical practices manage their, their practices. There's a lot of that kind of stuff in Southern California. So uh, companies um, who, uh, who are trying to, to, to fix part of a process, which is you know, on Excel spreadsheets or, or even some of them, you know, people are still sending faxes back and forth in some industries. So there's a huge number of companies in that area. So. Um, there's a couple others. Uh, there's uh, there are Play, Play VS is an esports company. Esports is a really huge growing area. How many people uh, have watched any esports at all? Anyone? Um, so esports, if you haven't watched it, basically it's you know the NBA, the NFL, and a lot, but they're playing video games. And a lot of people go, "What? You can do that?" And and there's a huge industry. They have a higher, they have more viewers for esports globally than all the sports leagues in in the U.S. They blow the NBA and the NFL out of out of the water. They get uh, the number of people, especially uh, it's a, actually in Asia and Europe, who watch esports is is huge. So the advertising dollars, you know, that's why people uh, like the sports stuff. And and the interesting twist on that is the uh, uh, there's a lot of crossover. So there's a lot of a lot of sports sports players who are in eSports, and there's a lot of endorsement deals and all, all that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting world. Uh, if, if you're one of those folks who used to play computer games, sit in the basement all the time, and your parents say, you're never going to get anything done if you sit and play, you can go, hey, I can be an eSports player. They, they actually are a professional eSports player, and it's just like you know, you're on a, on a sports team. So uh, I don't know, do, do you guys have any program here yet? A couple, couple of universities do, it's kind of funny. Um, Zadar is a storage company. Appetize is another one of those companies that's, uh, that's changing a process where uh, if, if you've ever gone to a stadium and you can now order stuff on a tablet, you'll see the people who got a tablet and they hit numbers when you order food and, and maybe you can use your smartphone. They do all the software back there for a lot of venues. So instead of going up to that old 1980s thing and they type in the numbers and try to figure stuff out, you can bring up your phone and you can order, hey, I want three hot dogs, I'll pick it up in two minutes, or you can deliver it here. Um, so they've done very well. Um, there's, there's a ton of these companies. So um, I'm curious, how many, how many people looking at this list recognize these companies? Yeah, see there's, so I found, I've done, I've uh, gone over these lists before with people, and it's amazing how many companies have raised, raised 20 million, 40 million, some of these companies have hundreds of millions of dollars, and no one's heard of them before. And if you want to sell products to a company, if you want to work for a company, if you want to see what areas, as an entrepreneur, should you, you be aware that there's a lot of activity that you could raise money, um, or you should be aware of competition, you need to look and see what's going on. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to me that there's so many companies of so, so many different types. Um, so um, we mentioned agriculture. Produce pay is, is one in ag. People always, especially here in Ventura County, um, they go, oh, how much, how much can you do in, in technology in agriculture? Actually, there's a ton. Um, I haven't, I'm surprised I haven't seen a drone startup here yet. Agriculture is adopting uh, unmanned area vehicles like crazy. 
And so uh, if you've ever seen uh, you know, a drone do a survey of a field, what they do is they run the drone up and down the field automatically, and they take pictures, and they use hyperspectral pictures, which is not just you know, visual, but they do infrared, and they can tell, oh, hey, you know, the crops in row seven are too dry. We need to you know, make that a little wetter. Oh, over there, those, are, those have disease. We need to go treat those. It's, it's a huge area. I'm surprised Ventura County hasn't gone into it. It's a, you know, given our, our agriculture background, if you're, if you're an entrepreneur thinking of that, you know, that's, a, that's a great area. Um, so, uh, oh, this is a funny one here. Order mark is restaurant orders. Um, how many people have got, gone to Cantor's Deli? Cantor's Deli is in LA. It's the classic place. It's been around forever. Um, and that startup actually came out of Cantor's Deli, believe it or not. What happens is the restaurants are there. Uh, if you ever run a restaurant, anyone here run a restaurant? So, so if you run a restaurant and you want to do online orders, right now what happens is you end up with a pile of hardware. There's, you know, Yelp has something, and, and uh, Amazon has something else, and Google has something else. You end up with a room. They called it, uh, I think they call it, I don't know if it is, I think it was a chaos room or something, where it's like everybody's stuff for the orders. And the problem is you've got, you know, something printing it out, another one you've got to look at my tablet. So they took and they've aggregated all that into one tablet, one system. So it's a huge uh, thing. It's kind of funny because it's an LA, LA, LA thing. You, you have an oldest, one of the oldest delis in LA, and a startup pops out. So. And by the way, if you have any questions or comments or anything, stop me. Uh, I can ramble on forever. So 101 corridor. So I, I uh, narrowed down some of the uh, stuff here in the corridor. Um, we, we've been in interesting, we have an interesting area here where uh, not a lot of, um, not a lot of uh, people follow exactly what's going on in the area, but there's a lot of activity. Uh, I don't have the uh, chart from the last few years, but uh, actually we get a lot more IPOs per capita per company than most of the other region. And so some of them, uh, robotics, that's where Invia is doing a warehouse um, organization. Prey.com is an online website around religion. It's starting the Hub 101. And, uh, uh, so I don't know if anyone's here that's in there. Um, uh, Axie is an IT company. Um, uh, SnapMD is a, another uh, healthcare-related uh, software. Um, so th there's a few here. Uh, not as many as I'd like to see, but uh, so you know what has gone on this year. Um, we, we go through ups and downs in this area. So, so some major exits this year. Um, so what's going on in terms of exits? So that's always interesting. Uh, we've had a lot of good years in the last few years in terms of companies exiting. Uh, the big one, which is also an area of, of course, is Sonos. Anyone here have a Sonos speakers? Yeah, so real nice speakers uh, in home. You can do control it with your smartphone, your tablet. Um, they've done very well. That took them a long time. I don't remember when they started. It's been a, it was a long, uh, long road. Um, uh, Silence is a tech uh, is just got bought. They're actually in Irvine. They're cybersecurity. Cybersecurity always is interesting and always has stuff going on. Uh, if you're interested in cybersecurity, um, it seems like there's an infinite number of opportunities in cybersecurity. In fact, um, I talked to so many cybersecurity companies. I have to, well, what part of this giant cybersecurity world are you part of? And it's humongous. And the reason why is anytime you have a website, especially finance, finance related, people want to hack into it. It's a, it's a growth industry. If you're, if you're a student maybe interested in, in that area, it's a, it's a good area to be. Um, they were just acquired by BlackBerry, and no one knows what BlackBerry makes anymore. It's pretty funny. Um, uh, Awesomeness TV was acquired by Viacom. They're a content, content thing. There's, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of content stuff out there. Um, it's always interesting because it seems more corporate than it is venture capital. Uh, if you've got a content startup and you want someone to invest in you, um, you need to look corporate. It's you know the people from Disney and Viacom and Warner Brothers, and, and those guys are the ones making investments. Um, venture capitalists uh, uh, generally avoid uh, content, and uh, unless I, I mean every once in a while you'll find angels who are from that world, but uh, it's uh, it is a tough one because the uh, the math behind producing content and advertising still is a little tough to match. So um, that's why uh, anyone, anyone saw, see that Hulu deal on Black Friday? They're doing, I think it was like Hulu for 
for nine dollars for the year or something like like that rather than their fifteen dollars because that's wise because they're going uh oh we need to ramp up some of the content and the subscriber numbers. Um, Blue microphones is here in Westlake. How many people play with those microphones? Yeah, so those are USB microphones. It's a hardware play. Uh, those are still uh, very much alive. Uh, in fact, they're more so than, than they have been in the last few years. So if uh, there's been a long tradition in this area of people developing hardware. It's hard. Uh, I was just talking with uh, Jonathan here at SoCal IP, who's, uh, uh, who's actually one of our sponsors. And uh, so thank you. The, uh, building hardware is not an internet site. You know, you've got manufacturing and all this other stuff. But if you know how to do it or you can partner with somebody, uh, there's, a, there's been a big growth in, in that, especially if you can do, uh, do something unique. Um, I, uh, I, I mentioned Ring, uh, the doorbell company, and when they first came out, I know the founder, Jamie Simonoff, his last product was a battery bank um, for, for your phone, right? And it was just like every other battery bank that you can get in bulk from, from overseas, right? You, you go to China and there's 150 companies that do battery banks. And I went, they're going to do a, a, a camera? I mean, what is the deal? And they, I, to their credit, they actually succeeded. Um, and the reason why they succeeded is they made it really easy to use, right? Plug and play. You plug it in and it works. And if anyone, if you want to know the secret of su success for entrepreneurs, most of them make things really easy to use for the consumer. You, you, you want it to be plug, plug it in, make it work. Uh, don't have 100, 100 buttons. Uh, my background's as an engineer, and especially the tech, technical folks, we love buttons. If we, if we can have an extra button, then we'll put an extra button in there, even if we don't know what it does, because we like those buttons. The problem is when the consumer wants to buy it, they're like your, you know, may, maybe you've got a really tech-savvy mother or grandmother, but you go to your grandmother, she says, why are there 25 buttons? You make it one button, right? Apple. Apple's the example there. So that's why they succeeded. That's why Ring succeeded, even though there's 50 other people doing similar hardware. So uh, if you're an entrepreneur, that's something I've noticed over the years. Uh, eHarmony, they got acquired, I don't know for how much, by a German company. eHarmony is the, the dating site. Um, they were, uh, I don't know how much it is, and it may have been a under a little pressure. Um, I don't know how many, and probably very few young, young folks uh, had been using eHarmony because they were stuck kind of in the 90s and all of a sudden, uh, you know, people had Snapchat and, and Instagram and Tinder and, and uh, all those other, you know, all the other, other stuff. So, um, uh, Serviz, another company along the hair, they're acquired by another, another startup, Porch. Uh, WorkPop was uh, uh, software, enterprise software, and Cornerstone. How many people have heard of Cornerstone On Demand? So I'm always amazed. Only the, only the insiders know about Cornerstone On Demand. They're one of the biggest software companies in Southern California. They had an IPO a number of years ago. They're, hire, they're always hiring. So if you're a student, they are hiring. They're trying to hire people who are across. And nobody ever knows what they do. I think it drives them crazy. They, uh, they run a conference every year, and people go, what? Cornerstone, what conference? They're, they're you know, I don't know if they're hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars, but the problem is, uh, you know, the, the startup that has the cool app, is it just gets so much more attention than enterprise software and the enter enterprise software companies. And the, the interesting thing about these enterprise software companies is some of them are publishing money. They just, yeah, they're, they're selling, they, they sell something and they make money and they put in there. If anyone's heard of J2 Global, how many people have heard of J2 Global? See, J2 Global is, is a billion dollar company. They buy, if you are an entrepreneur, you need to know what J2 Global is doing because what they do is they buy other companies. J2 Global is, is I think they buy three, four, five, six companies every quarter, every quarter. So if you're an entrepreneur, part of it, everyone goes, I want to do an IPO, especially these students. Um, <clears throat> I want to have an IPO. I want to be acquired by Apple or Google. And you know what? It, that, that's possible, but it doesn't happen all the time. But you look at something like J2 Global, and you may build your, your four-person startup which is just cranking money out and doing real well, and you bootstrapped it, you didn't really have venture investors, and they'll come in and they'll, they'll give you, they'll, they'll pull out the checkbook and they go, oh, what does this look like to you guys? This look good? And they go, whoa, we'll take it. It may not be Facebook or Google, but, but boy, you know, you say, hey, that was, that was great, and I'll go start another startup. So um, J2 Global's one, they actually run, they now own Ziff Davis, which most people have heard of, um, a, lot of uh, a lot of publications, and the other side they own a whole bunch of Internet services, e-faxing and, and uh, storage, online storage companies. So uh, look those guys up. 
So that is the major exits. So another story that I want to talk about here. And uh, by the way, at what time do I need to end? <laughs> Just so I watch the clock. <laughs> okay. Um, so venture fund prolifer pr proliferation. Uh, so this, the, the environment here is outstanding for startup entrepreneurs right now. Uh, most people don't know it, but there's been a ton, a ton, a ton of startup funds in the last uh, year and a half. There have been a lot of people who've gotten money, and, and some of these companies may not have uh, a ton of money, but a lot of them do. Um, so uh, all of these companies have money. They all have their own areas. If you're a veteran, by the way, Moonshot Capital is, is run by uh, ex-West uh, Point folks. Uh, they'll look at any veteran deal. Um, Bryant Steibel. Um, is Jeff Steibel, who's, uh, I think it's web.com, was his big thing. They, they sold another company, um, uh, b and uh, Credibility Corp, recently. And uh, 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 Bryant is Kobe Bryant. And uh, they, uh, they've made a lot of investments here and done very well. There, there's just a ton. Um, if you're local here, Bonfire is uh, uh, Jim Andelman, shows up at some of these events sometimes. And, uh, and so, so there's a lot of money out there. And all these, all these funds have a different perspective on what they want. Um, if you want to know more about that, go to my website. I do a lot of interviews with the, uh, the people who are on those funds. Um, you know, the key before you uh, uh, talk to an investor is what are, the, what are they interested in? What do they invest in? Um, why, why do they want to talk to me? And the other thing is they want to see is they want to know who you are. They, they care a little bit about what your product is, but they care a lot about what did you do before. So, uh, you know, advice to, to, to students, you're in the entrepreneurship program, it's easier to go in the door if you've worked for somebody else doing something related. Um, it's very hard to go to a venture investor and say, I have the next thing since sliced bread, and I'm going to go into the toaster business and never have ever, you know, built a toaster in your life, right? So that's, that's, a, that's a thing to learn. So anyway, a lot of money in the industry. So. Uh, one comment here is a lot of companies here, there's more buying than selling right now. Uh, Procore has been buying companies left and right there in Santa Barbara. How many people have heard of Procore? They're, they're going to have an IPO soon. Good company to work for, maybe. Um, they, uh, they are, I think, 1,000 people, and they started like five years ago. Um, HD Data is in Santa Barbara. They bought somebody recently. Um, Skyworks is buying stuff. J2 Global, if you want to go, go to my website. They've bought... Literally, I can't tell you the companies they've bought because they've bought so many. I think it's hundreds now. Um, so there's a lot of companies that are buying and selling. What that means for you, local entrepreneurs, students, whoever, is there's a lot of people who may buy your company. And they're not the people you think of, right? Everyone says, I want to be bought by Google. I want to be bought by Facebook. And it's not necessarily those folks. Um, so uh, I always want to touch on what are the areas that people are investing in and interested in. I talk to VCs all the time. All, uh, pretty much every day, and these are the areas. Machine learning, AI, if you are doing anything machine learning, AI, any analytics, um, huge hot area, uh, the, uh, and that's across the industries, right? If you're doing it for shipping or biotech or, or uh, energy or you know, internet advertising, whatever it is, uh, I think people realize now the computing power storage is available. There are investments left and right. Everyone will look at an AI investment. Uh, automation, I mentioned. Um, so, uh, um, you know, if you're automating any, any industry, it's a big area. Uh, people like that because they can see how you make money. Uh, vertical marketplaces, uh, those, are the, um, those are the Ubers of the world, but, you know, whatever, Uber of whatever. It's still hot. It's an area that, uh, that is going on. FinTech, uh, so that's financial technology. If you have any background in finance, there is a ton of activity and a ton of funding. There's a lot of companies who specifically are looking for new ways to lend to people, send money, uh, send money overseas, uh, figure out who's a good, good uh, who, who, who has good student loans or who doesn't have good student loans, there's everything. So um, robotics, drones, UAVs, uh, UAVs are a big uh, area as well. Just a lot of technology there. So unicorns, just so you know, the ones here in LA, um, so uh, SpaceX is 12 to 15 billion. CrowdStrike's 3 billion. Honest Companies uh, about a 1.7 billion. ZipRecruiter I mentioned, the 
they're, they're looking at an IPO. Procore is looking at an IPO. Bird, everyone, anyone running a Bird scooter and survived? Um, and <laughs> wear the helmet. Um, they've done very well. Uber's looking, Uber's looking at either buying them or uh, Lime right now. Um, and I think that deal will go fast. Uh, UST Global is an IT company in Irvine. Scopely Games, if you enjoy uh, computer games. Um, so these are the big ones to watch. You'll see a lot of acquisitions here. I had to take off four of the ones I had here because they all got acquired in the last month when I started putting it together. So uh, uh, a lot of activity. Um, uh, some of the signs, if you're ever interested, is when people start hiring executives from Silicon Valley, um, you know they're dressing up the executives. They go, hey, why did they hire the, the head of HR from Facebook? Oh, well, it's because they're going to go for an IPO. Um, sales guy from you know, Salesforce, whatever. It's just, it's just uh, a lot of it's window dressing, but that's kind of the signs. So, what to watch in 2019? Um, and uh, the, the areas, I mentioned this before, is if you are a startup, an entrepreneur, next year, starting next year is a good year for you. There's a lot of people looking to invest money because they've got $20 million, $50 million, $100 million. Um, they're being very picky, though, because they want to have the right deal. Most of the folks who run funds here are veterans. Uh, in terms of, you know, they've been there and done that with other venture funds. A lot of them lived through the dot-com days. How many people here uh, were in uh, elementary school when the dot-com <laughs> Anyway, so the uh, dot-com days was uh, everyone got funding. Uh, I used to call it, uh, uh, it said anybody with an MBA had a startup in their pocket. Um, nowadays, is every actor, instead of having a script, they also have a startup plan in the other pocket. So um, if you ever go to LA. But anyway, uh, so there's a good year if you have got the right investment. So they're very picky about it. Um, things to watch is the, as anyone who looks at the stock market, stock market's not been doing very well. It's, a, it's, it's an interesting calculation between a lot of funds available, but the public market's being down. And the private guys don't care about the public markets as much, but it definitely influences them. Um, when, whenever the public markets are down, the private investors start getting a little worried. Um, and then a lot of the limited partners are going, oh, I don't know if we should be making risky investments right now. So um, politics has been crimping a lot of startups. Um, one thing I've noticed is, you know, with all the stuff going on in the, in the political world, that a lot of the stuff that normally be covered for startups doesn't get covered. Some startup has some really cool technology. That could be your, your technology. Nobody cares because there's some, some random, random tweet that caused everyone to cry. So anyway. Um, uh, blockchain or not blockchain? Anyone who's heard, how many people here own Bitcoin? Really? How many people are mining Bitcoin on their phones? Nobody? <laughs> I knew, uh, anyway. So um, uh, Bitcoin, blockchain is, you know, cryptocurrency. It has been the biggest area people care about in Southern California, even among the venture investors for the last year. Um, however, it is, it is currently not doing well. And people, uh, part of the problem is the companies that you see that are doing blockchain and Bitcoin. Anyone heard about this Long Island blockchain company? So there's a company that was doing iced tea. And they renamed their company Long Island Blockchain. Their stock went through the roof. No one knew what, knew what they did, but they had blockchain in the name. That is emblematic of what's going on in that industry. Everybody has, if someone wants to sell you on cryptocurrency, you got to be very careful. Uh, I know some of the folks who, who did very well uh, in it, and they were the, they were the guys with a get-rich-quick scheme, right? You go and see them, they go, hey, hey, I got a deal for you today. You know? It's like, uh, so, so that's the guys that run it. It's an interesting area. Uh, it, it consumes energy like crazy, so that's a little bit of a problem. But it's an area to watch because uh, there's been a lot of activity there. Um, and uh, one thing is one one quarter, and this is partly this group having help, is you know, where are we going to be this year? Um, how are we going to be part of that tech, uh, tech startup world? How are we going to contribute? So some stuff people always ask me, how can I help you? And I say, spread the word. People don't know what's going on. And, and clearly, you know, there's a lot of companies here people don't know about. Love talking uh, to entrepreneurs and letting them know what's going on. And uh, love, to, lo love figuring out who are the interesting startups to profile and uh, any deals, venture fundings. Um, love sponsors for the website, of course. Thank you for the ones that are here. And uh, become a member. Uh, we actually have a membership that's $29 a year, $29.95 actually, um, which uh, helps us pay for all the content. And uh, my contact info uh, if you want. And thank you very much for having me.
Thank you, Ben. Do we have some time for a couple questions? Yes. Okay. Um, who has a question? Nobody? He answered them all. Where's the one over here? If someone else has a question, raise your hand as well. I'll get you a second microphone. I just a quick question. If we want to get a if, if we want to get access to just the list of the names of all those companies to look at later on, is there a chance like we can get the PowerPoint through either emailing you or something like that? Uh, yeah, I can I can give it to Mike so and and, okay. and you can get it. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, you can also go to my website. There's there's basically all those lists are available there. Hey Ben, how well is the non-tech sector doing? Uh, investment wise so what what kind of what what kind of investments do you do you mean non tech anything not entertainment and not technology based companies yeah so so you know what most of the investment activity in startups in the world is technology there's very few non technology companies that get funding and the reason why is venture investors are looking for return and the biggest bang for the buck is generally the the uh, the technology companies the other area that doesn't get a lot of investment is service companies. Um, a lot of people say, hey, I, I want to do a consultancy, and the investors just don't like it. So um, anything that requires, when you're, all your assets walk out the door, they don't like. Uh, they also don't like uh, content deals I, I mentioned. They don't like because that's uh, uh, almost like investing in toys. Like, what is the next Beanie Baby? And they're never good at that, right? They're good at saying, oh, we got customers who will pay you know, $50 a month to be able to do our invoices in software. And it's not so good like, hey, we're going to make a billion of these Beanie Babies, and maybe someone will buy it at Christmas. So. You had the, um, the Honest Company up there. Yes. It's doing pretty well. Is, is a consumer products company like that considered technology? Uh, it is. It's, it's, there's, there's a broad set of companies that are technology enabled. Um, a lot of people who are uh, kind of at the intersection of retail and technology, where they take advantage of it. So. From a, you showed us dozens of companies up there, and from a 10,000-foot view, uh, what would you s estimate or guess what the success ratio is of a company still being in business five, bi five years from startup date, and is Southern California better at producing successful startups than all the other areas in the country? So, so startups are always tough and tricky. Um, the interesting thing you'll see about all the companies on this list, they have high numbers, and they're into multiple rounds of funding. Generally, that means they will be around for five years because their investors are willing to put money in and say, hey, we ought to keep this one wide. The ones that you don't know about are the ones that got a Series A funding or seed funding and just couldn't get to the next step. And they just kind of fade off into the, into the twilight. So those, those, there's a lot of those that they get an initial round and then maybe their customers don't really like their product. Uh, that's a different market, so I don't follow that too closely. Um, yeah, yeah, it's completely, completely different world. That's a, there's actually a bunch of consumer, consumer startups doing nutrition products and sports drinks and, and all that. Uh, it's a different set of investors completely. Uh, any, any investment they get tends to be uh, large private equity firms that specialize in that area. Um, you know, the person who invested in, you know, uh, you know, uh, any, any of those, they're very, they're very vertical, right? So there's not a lot of them either. They tend to, like, oh, we backed, you know, uh, Monster, and we backed, you know, uh, uh, and so and so. There are all the two or three firms that do that. A angel investors tend to like that kind of deal, too, because they'll invest in free samples. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Going once. Good. If you, have, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Oh, um, one more. Oh, okay. I just have a comment. Uh, I'm endorsing your website. We've oh. been uh, members for a long time. If you're, if you're an honor investor, if you're uh, not a, an entrepreneur, it's just interesting stuff to keep up. The whole one-on-one -on -one corridor and what's happened to it in the past decade. Thank you. Bit. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it, uh, yeah if you're ever interested, uh, I think more people ought to be... Uh, I, of course, self-interest, but more people should be pay attention to what's going on here because there's so much going on, and uh, it's funny because I know a lot of people read things like TechCrunch, and one of the companies a few years ago, which was a huge success for the Tech Coast Angels, was Green Dot, and they do uh, the the debit cards. And the first time they got any, they were already a billion-dollar company, went IPO. 
The first time they got coverage was like a year after their IPO, and they said, wow, this is the most successful venture-backed company you know, this year, and no one had heard of them, because <laughs> they don't cover them. So come to my site, we cover all that. question regarding those uh, local companies. I noticed uh, quite a few companies out of Westlake Village, but none from Thousand Oaks. So I'm just curious, is there something you know, unique about the Westlake that uh, um, actually I, I, uh, I'm not sure what the thing, it doesn't actually matter on the local level. Um, it's, uh, and, and some people are on the border, and some people are in Calabasas, and it's, uh, that just happens to be where, where they are at the point. It, do, it doesn't make a difference to most investors. Um, if they're going to invest in something down here, they'll invest in something. So, Does anyone in the room have a startup based in Thousand Oaks? <laughs> we have one. We have Lone Gifting's in Thousand Oaks. You're, you're on the border. Or well, do you live in Keogh? No. Okay. Because you're, you're in Westlake. The tractor bad breath. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> and it's we still... Have a over there. Yeah. <laughs> it's technically... Westlake is still L.A. County. And, and most of the VCs are in L.A. I, I can't, I, we see mostly Westlake, that, and I hadn't really thought of it. I don't know that we see a lot uh, in Thousand Oaks. Uh, yeah, office space has a lot to do with it. Yeah. yeah. Other than what we do see are uh, these fast growth biotech startups, like Atara is in, is in Thousand Oaks, and right. it went from zero to holy crap in like a year. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the number one thing is to understand what they're looking for, what areas they invest in, what are, what are they trying to do, uh, and also get an introduction. Uh, they, they don't, even though they say they do, they generally don't look at that, uh, that uh, you know, business plan you email in. Uh, they're just swamped by that. They, wanna, they want someone to say, hey, you, you, these guys know what they're doing. Um, the, uh, if you're a service provider, so it's an a accountant or a attorney, IP attorneys are great for this. People who have done it before who are willing to vouch saying, oh, they, they know what they're doing and they, uh, uh, they're not just, you know, folks who, who are making this up. That helps a lot. The other thing is industry connections help a lot. So again, I can't stress how much, um, and, and this, is, this is one of those things that, especially the Silicon Valley myth is, Everybody who's you know out of college or heck just quit college, and you can have the next billion dollar startup. It's very hard to get funding that way, very hard, uh, almost never. So um, you know work for a company, work for a, a big company or a small company, uh, even just for a few years, just so you know what's going on. Go to, go to one of these companies that are unicorns. Those are always good companies to work for and see what is the environment like. And when you when that uh, when you go to look for funding and you said hey. I was the, uh, the, you know, the head of blah, blah, blah for Bird, then all of a sudden you'll get a call back. As opposed to you go, oh, well, you know, I've got a bachelor's and this and that, and you know, they go, no, 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 go work first and do it. I, I know people hate hearing that, but it's true. So. Back to Thousand Oaks for a second. I, I realize Rick Sean's in the room. Craig, how many startups do you have at Ventura Biocenter? There you go. I, we, Thousand Oaks just needs to have one name, because Newbury Park, Thousand Oaks, then the Westlake Village part of Thousand Oaks that's different than the Westlake Village part uh, in Los Angeles County. It just gets confusing. So they're there. Um, you just have to look. OK, why, let's um, stop there. Let's give Ben one more big round of applause. Thank you very much, Ben. Fascinating as always, I like to think I have my finger on the pulse of what's going on in tech in LA County and I always learn something from this talk. So thanks again, we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Um, Great, thank you, thank you for having me and, uh, and uh, glad everyone came out in the rain, so thanks. <laughs> Drive safe.